are live. Hello to all my guys, gals, and non-binary pals of Audio Podcast Land, and welcome to the first official episode of Tavern Tales, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition slice of life romantic comedy fill in xyz whatever we're still trying to figure out what exactly is going to be the shtick for this game but it's going to be very wholesome or as wholesome as we're going to try to make it with this group of gremlins that i have for players but that's for a later problem i am the dungeon master of this game mikey you can follow me all over social medias at various iterations of pop culture geek or you can follow all of us collectively at vibe try productions across the social medias we're going to want to give us a follow to stay up to date on all the projects that we got going on. We got lots of actual play podcasts. We got a bunch of pop culture podcasts. So we got a little something for everyone. We promise to keep you entertained or as entertained as a bunch of nerds on the Internet can possibly do. I love these nerds. Speaking of nerds, I am always joined by my lovely cast of players. So we're going to go around real quick. They're going to introduce themselves plug any socials and (laughs) projects they got going on and then we'll jump into tonight so the dice gods have decided that eeny meeny miny mo christopher you shall be the first to go (laughs) hello hello this is chris also known as riku you can find me on social media as pup riku or puppy riku all depending on what app you're using you can also find me here on vibe tribe on various different shows you can find me also on brave new wild as well as a walk among gods you can also find me as the game master for the academy and for the crystal city additionally one really cool thing just now i now that i know when this is going to be coming out if you're in the madison wisconsin area i'm actually directing a show in at the bartell theater a show called laced so if you're interested in seeing that come on down to the bartell theater and check it out it'll be going up from the end it goes up from April 28th through May 13th, so make sure to get your tickets and check it out. But tonight, tonight I am playing Alonza, who is your custom lineage paladin. For now. <laughs> For now. <laughs> I know what my multi-class route is currently, so we'll see where it Sweet. Next person to give their introduction is going to be Casey. Hello, everyone. My name is Casey. You can find me on some social medias, but I'm not going to tell you where to find me. You have to find me. I am going to be playing tonight. Show or Shogram is his proper name. He is a shifter bard or ratty character there. So I'm looking to have fun with that. Haven't played a bard before. You can also find me on the Crystal City. That's a lot of fun going on there. Find me there. That's about it. Thanks. (laughs) Awesome. All right. He's been rocking me with me since day one. He's a big pain in my ass, but I love him to death. Next person to give their introduction is going to be Jace. How's it going, everybody? I'm Jace or JC Vanguard. You can find me on TikTok, although I don't post there much. I also own two other games, at least in DD Vibe Drive, but Call of the Deep and Dusk Vale. Tonight I'm going to be playing Holden Door. So I'm holding the door as a druid. And I really like the stars. Yay. I'm never going to not get tired of hearing that name through introductions all the time. Oh, my goodness. And then, of course, last but certainly not least for now, we have someone brand new to Vibe Tribe. But I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you also. I'm going to give Bella the floor. Hi, my name is Bella. I am a... Bella's very nervous. Hi, I'm Jace again. This is... Bella's what? Bella's husband. Bella's going to play Ingrid, the fighter. She's too nervous. I'm sorry. Never apologize for nervousness. I am so happy to have you here. I'm so happy to have my first husband and wife duo in one of my games. I've never done so before, but I'm really excited. I hope you all enjoy the ride. Unfortunately, as of right now, we are missing a couple of people tonight, but I definitely wanted to give them a shout out because you may or may not hear some of them later in the episode. First off, we have John, or as we call him here in Vitribe, the professor who is playing Hodir, our rogue. You can follow him all over the social medias at John Crossway. Please make sure you go follow his TikToks because he has a bunch of storytelling 
videos and they are very entertained. And if you want to hear about his story of when he went to Ireland and decided to figure out, fuck around and find out with the Fae by literally trapping one of them in a bottle, it is a, oh, it is. Yeah, I see eyes. Y'all need to go to watch that series because it was glorious. And the fact that man is still here is great. I am shocked he's still alive. What the hell? Oh, you should see the you should also see the series of videos where he talks about where his dad like found the equivalent of a Necronomicon when he was little. So it was ridiculous. This man has lived through some crazy things and it's so much fun. We are also missing, as of right now, Dakota, who plays Asiad Loon, our sorcerer, who is in a constant rivalry of whether the moon or the stars are better with Jace's character. You can follow him all over the Discord at Shirozuki. You can also find him Mondays over at ADH Adventures for Gods of Orlea Phase 2, where he plays the wizard that messed up the world. It's all his fault. And then finally, we are also missing Mikkel, who plays Shortstack, our barbarian. I'm going to love this name. I'm so excited for the characterization of it. But you can follow him all over the social medias at Dungaree Mike. He is amazing. And I give him kudos because he lives halfway across the world and he stays up super early for us. But he has to work tomorrow. So therefore, that is why he's missing. But with introductions out of the way, let's get into tonight proper. So as a bit of a disclaimer to my players and to the listening audience to get you prepared for what's about to go down, Tavern Tales is going to be designed as an episodic format in which that instead of there being a grand overarching narrative, it's going to be told in short stories of our party just helping out the locals in this little town that they're about to find themselves in. And it's going to be as wholesome as we possibly can. There's going to be some shenanigans. There's going to be some fun times. But this is meant to be lighthearted with a little bit of adventure. But there's no big bad except for learning how to pay your rent in this game. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Because the most evilest thing on this planet is paying your rent. (laughs) Taxes. Thankfully, there's no... I mean, there technically are taxes in this world, but I'm not going to... You're going to learn how how to pay room and board because we'll discuss that in a little bit. But... With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get started. So as the camera kind of pans out, we see our lovely adventurers walking at the moment through a serene forest. Birds are chirping. The sun is shining. There may or may not be squirrels and raccoons all over the place. (laughs) There's that thing. But as the camera kind of pans in closer, we get a little bit more of high definition of our characters as they are walking along this path, heading towards their destination of a small town known as Lake Azure. So for those of you that take notes, Lake Azure, Azure is spelled A-S-Z-U-R-E. So that is the current destination that our party has seemed to find their way to. Where, then we'll get into it in more detail in a little bit later, where there is a grand carnival happening in Lake Azure. But before we get there, why don't we get a little bit of an introduction of our party? So as you all are walking, we're going to start in the same order. So I'm going to go with Chris. Why don't you describe what your character, Alonza, looks like and give us a little bit of what's going on in their head at the moment. Give us their monologue thoughts. <laughs> so Alonza is is a lot shorter around dwarf or uh, gnome size in height and size. A pinkish hue on her skin, you see her sitting there. She's flipping through a book currently that appears. It, it's the book itself is just history of the land. Nothing really too exciting. Just learning about more about the area that she's in, all the stories and such, and more so just trying to look busy at this point. She has a long, trying to pull up her 
picture right now. Yeah, that's what I have. She has longer hair that goes down to her shoulders, also pinkish in hue with, with a bandana on. And she has a large hammer next to her. Now, looking at her at first, you think that she couldn't lift anything of this size. But if you've known Alonza for a while, she swings that thing around like it's a wiffle ball bat. She gets underestimated a lot by the local brutes of the town. As she's sitting there, she is flipping through the book and is just musing about fun stories of the day and fantastical creatures that she's met along the way and just recounting to herself, almost like telling herself a story about herself. And it's just, you don't really hear anything coming out of her, but at times she'll be like, give a little chuckle from behind the book, which folks find really weird because she's reading a history of the land book and she's chuckling. It's almost like she's just trying to not have to do any work right now. <laughs> oh, you're going to be one of those fun characters, aren't you? <laughs> I'm so excited. This is going to be really good. As I guess a I guess the best way to describe it would be as Alonza is in her own world. <laughs> the camera kind of pans to her party member walking beside her. Casey, why don't you give us a little bit of description of your character and their inner thoughts at the moment? <laughs> sure. My character's name is Shogrim, but mostly goes by Sho. As I said before, Sho's a bard. Grew up in kind of a circus background, was orphaned as a young were-rat. They are a shifter, mostly male, but shifts a little bit, has some gender queerness there, a little bit of bending going on there, as needed in different circumstances. Show's pretty handsome, I would say, pretty cute. Looks like a rat, but pretty cute. And nice green eyes, red hair, of course. Long, long red hair that's, that's put up in, in a long flowing, like, top ponytail that hangs down and on the back and also has a long beard that's separated into a couple areas with beads and stuff in it. Show dresses flowy. It can go either way, but there's a nice dress in, his pa in their pack if they need it, but generally pretty showy. About medium size, about five, six, only 25 years old, so pretty young and fair skin other than that rat look to him. Nice little waist, 140 pounds approximately, so we have a nice shapely little figure there things that i fantasize about as an aside a uh, show is is show likes if show comes across something that they see they'll swipe it if it's good for the family uh, good, pretty very tribal based very charity oriented but it's naughty and has a lot of fun with it also terrible at at reading fortunes but does side as a fortune teller in 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 the from the circus background so it brings that a little bit but it's horrible at it it's rarely gives you a correct answer but it's usually pretty pretty creative the show's a fun character yeah that's it i forgot about all that <laughs> oh my goodness this is good oh i'm so excited this is gonna be a lot of fun once everybody gets together all right so show as you are currently walking with the rest of your party the next camera shot goes to one of your other party members so, so jace why don't you intro your character to us holden door is like a skittish he's a druid he's a skittish druid he's he's more like the nerd of the group so he's about 5'10 he's got bluish gray hair with like flagstone colors of his skin as an earth genasi so he looks Bluish gray with a couple streaks of brown in, like mixed in. Really cool. His personality is basically books. Like anything involving books, he's all about. So he's trying to learn more and more about the stars above or what he can learn about what happened here, like any meteorites or meteors, anything he can find involving the stars. He is in that book or he is trying to scalp for that. Oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah, so... It comes to no surprise that Holden is walking, but also just flipping through a page of a book. Always. Just Gandalf with a staff and a book always in hand. I love it so much. Yeah, so Holden, you're, interestingly enough, you're reading this book. Though the sun is out, you are well-versed within the skyline that you're able to be like, There's that's going to be right there, that's going to be right there. 
You can see the faint outline of the moon, but you flip the bird to the moon. <laughs> I don't really flip the bird to the moon. I'm I just try to explain there's more than just the moon. There's more than just those little dots we see past the moon. They're not here quite yet, but one of your party members tends to disagree, but we'll get into that conversation in a little now, bit. If it involves him, then yeah, I'll flip the moon off. Also, speaking of which, Alonza, as you are also doing your thing, you just see a bird just fly by. It's like, you see as Alonza's head just immediately snap up from the book, that smile that she had just droops down into an frustrated face as he follows the bird just dart across the dart across the room before he re- before she returns back to her book i think i'm starting to think of where her, her version the birds have come into place and it and i am going to say that it comes from my own personal experience with birds as i have been repeatedly a dive bombed attacked by birds on my walk to work during my old job repeatedly i even went across the street to walk around them and they would still fly across the street to dive bomb me i think that's where this is coming from what crows did you piss off they weren't crows i don't know what the hell they were but i have a couple bumps still in the back of my head from where their beaks landed into like literally dive bomb into me you're too skinny then you look like a worm yeah probably Oh my gosh. <laughs> Why do you think I just went back started going back to the gym? <laughs> I got new games, son. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm really excited to play with this little bit of that character. I was like, all of a sudden just birds. You know what? I'm gonna save that question till when we get to it, because I have questions about like bird people like air crocos and all that good stuff. <laughs> I think that Linda understands the difference between Eric Kraka and a bird. A bird. Bird people are one thing, and then there are just birds. I now know what I'm always transforming into. You're going to get a rock golf ball hit towards your head from her mace. Uh huh. Let's go, Tinker Ton. We're off to a great start. I love it. But as this is all going on, of course, the camera also pans up to, at least for now, our last party member that is currently traveling in this quadruplet, I guess is the way we're going to put it. I don't know. Words are very hard for me today. But Bella, if you can, if you are up to it, why don't you give us a little bit of description of your character? (laughs) Okay, my character's name is Ingrid. She is about five foot seven. She has light blue skin, black long hair, probably down like to her waist. She is 35 years old and normally she's like a nervous wreck, but she tries really hard to keep it together. She also is I'm a former doctor, so I'm trying to figure out who uh, killed the people of my village. So, yeah, trying to figure out who that was. Oh, I'm so excited. You just gave me a plot hook that I cannot wait to play with. (laughs) She's a serious one, that Ingrid. (laughs) She was a calm one, and then killed her family, killed her village, and now I gotta figure out what happened. Yeah. If she wants a tarot reading sometime in the future, let me know. I could probably help find the people. <laughs> yeah, sure to help find the people. She will definitely take your. Yeah, she'll definitely do that. I love this group already. This is going to be so much fun. So, as the four of you are traveling down this forest pathway, heading over to Lake Azure, you each are having idle conversations. And you are, in the back of your minds, you are reminded of a note that your whole entire party was given about why exactly it is that you are heading to Lake Azure. And, hold up, let me get this right. (laughs) Hold up, wait a minute. Let me throw some in it. This is going to be good. Clear the throat. 
So as you remember from your note, the note says the following. <clears throat> Greetings, adventurers, and thank you for accepting the magnificent Marco's request of a little bit of an investigative kind of thing. I just need you to investigate a little carnival for me to see that if it's on the up and up. I've been getting word that the carnival over at Lake Azure is having some issues about performers not necessarily being treated well, as well as it not being up to par with my name being associated with it. So if you would kindly investigate and report your findings back to my associate who will be waiting for you at Lake Azure, that would be just magnificent. And of course, you will be handsomely rewarded, but payment can be discussed upon completion of mission. Have a good time. Don't die. And uh, keep it going. And of course, when you read this note, too, for some reason, there is just like magical confetti that just pops out of the letter once you finished it upon reading. It's like so for the Spark Notes version, the person that has hired you guys to go take a look at this carnival in Lake Azure is known as the Magnificent Marco. He to give a little bit of information, his name is renowned in these parts of the Forgotten Realms. He is. I want to say he's like a stage magician, but good. <laughs> he's not the one you hire for a kid's birthday party at the last minute. Like he actually knows his stuff. He can be a little bit of fit egocentric when it comes to stuff. But you know what? He can back up his skills. And he wanted some adventurers to go investigate. And y'all just happened to need the coin because Lord knows y'all are broke right now. <laughs> and who doesn't like monies? Because money is a good thing, and it's the currency that makes things go around. Also, as an addendum to the letter two, towards the end of it, <laughs> magnificent, <laughs> magnificent Marco also says that your fr other associates will meet you at the carnival. They are currently on another mission from me at the moment to go get some supplies. <laughs> But they will meet you at the location in a bit of a couple hours. And of course, as you put away the letter, you all get this amazing sight as you come over the precipice of a hillside. And as you look down into the valley where Lake Azure is currently located, you see a magnificent marine blue glint of the lake itself. Very clear, crystalline water. It's very clean with the backdrop of the mountains cascading the back. One might describe the tree line as just a bunch of happy little trees just spread out there. Yes, I did quote Bob Ross. Don't at me. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Listen, you will come to find I don't take myself too seriously around here, which is perfect for this game. But as you guys walk down the hillside and you get closer and closer to the carnival, you have traveled as quickly as you can at the behest of Magnificent Marco, and you've made enough good time. So right now, I would say it's about early afternoon, so about 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And so as you come to the crest of this hill, you begin to hear the faint music and cheering kind of grace your ears and your ear holes, so to speak. You look down to see the bright lights, tents and a plethora of carnival attractions, as well as a multitude of patrons just going in and out between stalls and rides and that kind of thing. As you are just walking into the carnival. <laughs> you walk straight into the mess of tents and stalls. You are immediately hit with the sugary aroma, accompanied with a little bit of undertoads of fried everything, as a carnival tends to usually have. They're not the healthiest places, but who cares? It's a great time. So, as you look around the carnival... You see a variety of things. You see a meat stall that is filled with what looks to be exotic meats on, ver on various roasting pits. 
which are also featuring strange animals that are being rotated. In another stall, you see a bubbly, brightly pink sweet stall that has cotton candy just out the wazoo coming out of it. You also see a variety of stalls with carnival games where you can win prizes. In the distance, you see a large Ferris wheel kind of spinning lazily at the far end of the carnival. And of course, what carnival is not complete without a giant red and white striped circus tent at the center where you can pretty much hear a loud cacophony of cheering to come from the tent ever so often. And as mentioned before, there are a multitude of people milling about. And surprisingly, there's even a few town guards that are there on duty that are also enjoying the sights as well. But the four of you do have a little bit of a free reign now. So, well, who would like to, what would you guys like to do first? Hoo-hoo, I want cotton candy. Alrighty, so Show wants the cotton candy. <laughs> Anyone else want to anyone else want to do something, too? Because we'll go to you guys individually, because I want to give you guys each a moment to just interact a little bit with your surroundings. I want to see some of the carnival games that they have. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> All right. So Lonzo will go to the games row. All righty. Holden, anything specific? You would like to do? I would like some meat. Yes. yes. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to go to meat. I love it. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. All righty. So, ne- so we'll go We'll go player by player, give you guys a little bit of time. So we'll start off with you, Show. So, Show, as you walk up to this cotton candy stall, Without even getting close enough to figure out what exactly that you want, you are just overwhelmed by the <laughs> by the overpowering sugary smell coming from this stall that as you're breathing it in and taking it like in through the nostrils and as you're breathing it in, it burns a little bit of how sweet the air around the stall has become. And as you get closer to the stall, you see a small halfling woman just running about back and forth between the stall, handing out sweets and handing out cotton candy. And as you get to the front of the stall, she just greets you with this big plastered smile over her friend. She's oh, welcome, sweetums. My name is Candy. How can I help you today? I like it big and I like it orange. And by the time we finish up here, I want this cotton candy to be all in this beard. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> it's going to be that kind of game. I'm so excited. <laughs> so Candy just looks at you. And says, oh, so you wanted those. All right, sweetie, just give me a sec. Let me get you something real quick and we'll make sure we get it all up in the beards. And she just winks at you and goes back <laughs> to whip up some cotton candy. Oh, my goodness. So as you're looking at Candy <laughs> as she's making the sweets, This isn't the first time you've had cotton candy. You've had it on multiple occasions, especially given the fact that you given your background just a tiny bit. But you never really understood the art form that comes with cotton candy making. And as you are watching candy, get your cotton candy. It's like watching a conductor of an orchestra just work their magic. She takes the stick and just without even giving it a second thought, just like it's just graciously flows into the spindle as she takes the stick and is just lifting it ever so slightly in perfect mo- circular motion, creating this. It is a work of art that is about to be digested in your stomach. <laughs> and I feel I watch this movement and I start to undulate ever so slightly around the circular motion as I'm watching it just fly onto the stick. And I definitely look over to Ingrid, who looks like she's pretty serious over there. So I'm thinking this will put a smile on her face. And I want her to have also a nice big piece of cotton candy, please. Oh, so du- on me. So, ooh, nice. <laughs> and so Candy just looks over and is like, oh, OK, I see what you get, hun. Don't worry, this these two are on the house. And she takes another stick and 
As she's finishing the first one, she just, without <laughs> breaking, just starts with the second one. And it's just as graceful as the first one as the spindles of cotton candy begin to grow thicker and thicker around the cotton candy stick. And she just hands the cotton candies over to you, show. And she says, like, don't worry. It's don't worry, doll. These are on the house now. You go enjoy yourself. Oh, and if you want more stuff, I got some things for you later. Seems you got a bit of a sweet tooth. So if you want something a little more, more than cotton candy, you come see me later, hun. <laughs> hey, ho. Oh, my heart. This is going to be a lot of fun. So candy hands is you sh- the cotton candy show. And again, on the house because candy uh, likes you already. And so you take your cotton candy and you're going to make your way back to your f- party, which we'll get into in a little bit. <laughs> All right. So, Alonza, you have found yourself at what I will call this as a carnival row. So this is the row at most fairs and carnivals that usually have where all the games are. So as you enter carnival row, there are a couple of different games that you spot, like your more traditional ones, like Brain the Clown Mouth, so the balloon pumps up and explodes. You see a dunk tank. For some reason, you see like a sack throwing competition to see who can throw a sack of flour the furthest across this open field. And then you also see what looks to be a a magical mechanical bull as well. What would you like to do? Girl, you know you want to ride that bull. I do. I do want to ride that bull. It's, this is going to be very entertaining. But yes, Alonzo basically makes a beeline for the bull. We'll talk off camera. <laughs> ride that bull! I knew what I was getting into, but yeah. Oh my goodness. Alrighty. So, Alonzo, you make your way to the mechanical bull. <laughs> and as you get in line... In front, you see what you typically see with a mechanical, the very gaudy inflatable like backdrop with a desert and some inflatable cactus, like the typical faded red and blue colorings that is mostly on these mechanical bull rings as far as the inflatable part underneath it and the walls surrounding it in case you get flung too far. And as you get to the front, standing behind the operating panel, you see this kind of very doubt looking gnome looks to be in his early. I don't know. He's got salt and pepper gray. He looks like he's seen a lot of shit is basically what I'm trying to say. He's been around the block a couple of times. And as he looks at you, as you get to the front of the line, he just eyes you up and down. Alonzo is like, is like, this shit, this shouldn't be too hard. <laughs> I kind of look him back and goes, no, it ain't. And I just stroll off on to the bowl itself. Why do I imagine Alonzo like into the bowl? <laughs> oh, my goodness. All righty. How do I want to do this? OK, I almost see her as she like dragging the hammer up behind her. Oh, my she, gosh. Like, props it up. <laughs> Props the handle up onto the side of the bull and w- basically walks up the hammer side to get up and on top of the bull to get ready to go. Oh, ever so with the dramatics. I love it. <laughs> Alrighty. So I got to pick my words carefully because I almost said something that was going to sound really out of pocket. But as you know, it still sounds bad. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. We have an explicit rating on this podcast. We'll be fine. So as you position yourself properly, as you're mounting this bull, (laughs) I don't even want to say, (laughs) I don't even want to say the, there's no other way to describe it. But you say it. You position yourself and you make sure you're in a comfortable enough position to straddle the bull. (laughs) Does the song Dirty from Christina Aguilera start playing? Yes. Yes. Where's the bard? Where's the bard to be playing it in the background? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Don't worry. They have, I would say a PA system, but the PA system is just a megaphone with another bard that's like nearby. It is, yo, play that one song. And then, yeah, (laughs) dirty voice over the PA system. Alrighty. As you get ready, the bull begins to slowly buck back and forth. 
before starting to pick up a little bit of speed and starts to circle around. Let's see how long you last, Alonzo. So go ahead. I'm going to give you, you know what? Give me an a- <laughs> give me an acrobatics check. I'm going to bend it just a little bit. Acrobatics, all right. Don't uh, roll that one on this. Oh, g- please. That would be hilarious. That would be an 11. Cool, you barely made it, but you so survived this ones, stuff. But <laughs> Gee. It's oh 11. My... Because I know. One, one, uh... I know. So, you know what? You are you barely succeed this round, but narrate this first round of you being able to hang on. So, at this moment, she gets on, she grabs the handle. You see, she looks like a child on this thing. Her legs aren't even getting down to the stirrups. They're just spread apart on that saddle, and it just starts bucking. You can see as she's almost, like, sliding up and down the saddle as it's bucking her. She's not able to give a good grip onto it with her thighs. But while gripping onto that handle, she's able to keep herself on. You might see her, like, bouncing up and down from time to time from the buck. She can't really get a good grip with her legs, but she's able to hang on there just fine. <laughs> We're all adults, I swear. We're all adults on this podcast. <laughs> hey, y'all are the one laughing, not me. Don't, yeah. All right. <laughs> so round two, the DC has been upped. Let's see. Give me another acrobatics, please. That would be a six. And we were doing so good. We were doing so well. It's okay. So, Alonza, as you, you're like, yeah, I got the hang of this. You faintly, as the bull turns, you faintly see the ride operator just give this very twisted, crooked smile as you just see him crank up the knob a little bit, which in turn makes the bull Go a little, spin a little faster, get a little more buck wild. And if, as if you didn't have enough uh, trouble trying to keep yourself on the bull, you're losing grip. And because you can't reach the stirrups in this mechanical bull, you're having a hard time just using the sheer strength. And as hard as you try, as soon as the bull, like, violently (laughs) turns itself to the left you just fly off this thing and you hit the inflatable side of the wall and just like a comic like comically fashion just like slowly slide against the wall as you go down to the floor i want to say like i see i see the ride operator go to crank it and you just hear under her above oh you fucking bitch but yeah alon's just gonna get up dust herself off grab her hammer begin walking out and As she walks past the ride ride operator, I'm assuming the ride operator is looking all smug at him, at her. Oh, yeah. Can I try to, like, just slightly trip her, trip him? (laughs) Just reach out my hammer just slightly to try to just hook his leg. I'm going to say, I'm going to say you can try. All right. I'm going to, goodness, you know what? Let's see how... Act, let's see how much of an accident you can make it look like. So I'm breaking the rule here, but not, give me a sleight of hand, please. Sleight of hand. All right. 13. Yeah. So, <laughs> along, so as this ride operator is just smirking a little bit, Alonzo, you just put on this facade. You're like, oh, this is fun swinging your hammer and you... Calcul- you calculated enough where as you're passing by the right operator, you're like, oops. And it not necessarily hooks into his leg, but hooks underneath the step stool he has to stand on because he's very short. <laughs> and the stool kind of just caves as it falls to the side, which thus makes the right opera be like, ah. And as he gets up to the floor and just sees you like, Literally, Urkel did I do that? <laughs> sure. I look, I look, I look, I have a Harley Quinn, like, smile across my face, and I just go, Honey, now I'm not a bully on a book. And I just keep walking. Oh my gosh. The right operator just shakes his head, and it's just, just like, in his head, he's just, I will get my, I will vow revenge. Oh my goodness. That this, is part, this party has tood. This party has <laughs> much tood. And that's just with the 
it's just and that's just with you four. I can't even imagine what everyone else is going to add to this is going to get out of control real fast. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But yeah, so Alonzo, as you make your way back, you reconvene with <laughs> show as you see show holding up like these two large. Well, has show eaten at least his cotton candy yet or is he still holding on to it? <laughs> I'm it's all over my beard. I'm literally just picking it out and eating it as we're talking and giggling. <laughs> that was great. I love to see you fall. Wow. Throw shade at Alonzo. I love it. Alonzo, <laughs> you can rebuttal if you would like. I'm going to admit I completely missed that. I had something else going on. <laughs> How dare you? No, it's Kate. <laughs> but to quickly recap, so sh- show <laughs> Just his beard, show's beard is all a mess with the cotton candy and just picking at the bits of it that are still there and eating it. And literally just told you that was great. I'd love to, I'd love to see you fall. Hansa's just looking at him and goes, just, yeah. I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. Sorry. <laughs> he just looks back at Adam and goes, wish I could say the same about you, sticky lips. Damn. Oh my. You two are going to be so much fun as we continue on with this game. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Meanwhile, over at, th- I guess what we'll call like fantasy Arby's because they have the meats, apparently. <laughs> so we find ourselves over with Holden and Ingrid as the two of you walk up to this meat stand. As you get closer to the vicinity of the stall, your senses are immediately hit with the smell of the smokiness that is radiating off these hanging delicacies on these kind of like spit roasters in a little bit. Again, there are a variety of creatures that are on there. Your typical ones that you see, like you see a pig, you see a duck, you see what looks to be some other weird creatures as well. Like you swear that you see... <laughs> For some reason, there's somehow they found a way to make a fried gelatinous cube. Don't ask the guy, the man, the, the man who is in charge of the meat stand is very peculiar. It's very. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But as the two of you walk up, just rotating the spit roaster with the giant pig on it, you see a half orc wearing nothing but his shorts and like his apron, so to speak. And he's just spit. He's just spinning it away, looks at you, and is like, what can I get you? Can I have that in a really weird looking, like, rat on a stick with teriyaki sauce looks like dripping off of it? Can I have six of those, please? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) So he's, yes. Are you sure you want six of those? Those are kind. You must be a hunger boy. It it tastes, it it smells like it tastes good. Be like, wouldn't you like some sauce with that? (laughs) Is it dipping sauce on the side? Because I like dippy sauce. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> then I'll take some dippy sauce. Alrighty. And what can I get you, young lady? <laughs> I just want some of the pig. I'm going safe over here. And you this is something new unless you try something weird. No. <laughs> that looks disgusting and it's dripping something that I, I don't know what that is. But it could be delicious. No. Here, look, I'll give you one of mine. You try it. You might like it. No. Come on, it only smells a little bit foreign. Oh, this dynamic I'm so excited about. <laughs> so, the half-orc gives you holding your six fried rats on a stick with some extra dipping sauce. Ingrid, you get like a nice kind of ketchup boat with shredded pig in it. Surprisingly, he also garnishes it with little pineapple pieces in it as well and hands it over. So I'm going to start with you, Ingrid. Ingrid, as you take a bite out of this pig, this is amazing. It has been cooked to perfection. It is. This isn't your first time having pig on a roast, a roasted pig, so to speak. But you start to taste like the flavors and the spices that went into rubbing all over the pig. It is moi. And of course, accented with the sweetness of the pineapple. It is just beautiful. Hold it. <laughs> so as you take a bite of your rat on a stick, first you dip it into the extra dipping sauces. <laughs> dipping sauce. Dipping sauce. 
Okay, fine. Dipping sauce, my bad. Dippy, like dippy eggs. <laughs> dippy sauce. I'll show you a dippy. Anyway, <laughs> so as you put it in the dippy sauce, <laughs> I hate you and love you at the same time, but as you dip the rat in the dippy sauce, you take a bite out of it. At first, there really isn't a taste to it. And then you start to feel your taste buds go slightly numb just a tiny bit. <laughs> it seems that there has been one too much Cajun powder that got put on these rats. And so your taste buds are feeling a new sensation. And then the more you eat this, you get used to it. But then you as you feel it enter your intestines and into your gastric juices. This is so glorious. Holden, I need you to roll me a constitution saving throw, please. That's a 15. Okay. So you feel inside of your stomach. You start to hear the gurgles and you start to. In a weird way, you're able to hear and slightly feel liquidous of form of your food trying to escape. But you're able to just be like, no, stomach, you will not do this to me today. <laughs> Hold my finger. No. <laughs> I will say, had you failed that roll, you would have to find the nearest outhouse. I wasn't going to lie. <laughs> As I continue to eat the meat. You're going to get meat sweats. <laughs> hey, I don't know about you, but when I go to the Chinese restaurant, I specifically get rat on a stick. It is delicious. <laughs> it's chicken teriyaki on a stick, and I love it. I call it rat on a stick, and I destroy it. Yeah, you're lucky it didn't destroy anything else now that your character ate that. But that's for neither here nor here. That would have been a fun thing. But at this point, the four of you reconvene. Holden and Ingrid, you just see what remains of cotton candy, just the last bit of it being picked out of Sho's beard. Yolanda yeah. is just like, <laughs> with oh, her I, hammer. <laughs> and I, I see you're eating my cousin over there. I hope they were good. I don't know what this is. Do you want to try it? Sure. Do you take a bite out of it, show? <laughs> so fucking lootly. <laughs> All right. Roll me a constitution saving throw. Oh, show, what did you roll? <laughs> oh, no, a not a. Oh, not a four, bro. <laughs> <sighs> oh, show. So, show, as you take a bite out of it. We still don't know if this is a cousin of yours or how you're related to what you're about to eat. But you get the same sensation that. This rat has been over like slathered with Cajun powder and but your tongue is briefly on fire, but then it settles and a few moments pass and you're like, OK, like this is fine. And then immediately you just feel within the bowels of your intestines, you feel your stomach begin to gurgle a little bit. But unlike Holden, you start to feel. <laughs> It had to be like, nah, I need to find the nearest bathroom. Where's the nearest bathroom? Give me to a bathroom. <laughs> the cannibalism does not pay. No, the cannibalism does not pay. <laughs> and so you just, the rest of you just see, oh my gosh, the rest of you just see show just like book it like a bat out of hell as he runs to the nearest like outhouse. And as you are, oh my gosh, as the three of you are just watching from a distance, you just hear the guttural, like... He should have had the extra dippy sauce. <laughs> you just hear the grunts and the yells coming from the outhouse. <laughs> oh. oh, thank God. Come on, cotton candy. Wait, I forgot. Did you take the cotton candy with you into the outhouse? <laughs> it's still in my beard. <laughs> uh no, what about Ingrid's one? Ingrid's one? <laughs> oh, no, I handed it off to Ingrid. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> so yeah, Ingrid show gives you the cotton candy before he darts to the nearest restaurant. I don't know if I want to eat it because I don't know if it's from the cotton candy or from what he just ate. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious. You know what? Let's have you roll your first roll. I'm going to have you roll me in and investigate to see if this cotton candy's on the up and up. As the computer loads, hold on. It's going to be a nine. So close. You can't really necessarily tell if this cotton candy is in the up and up. You get a sensation that it is, but you can't. You can neither confirm nor deny that fact. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, this is so much better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All righty. So after after show survives the meat sweats and comes out of the restroom and just just like you just see beads of sweat coming down from his forehead. Yeah, so the cannibalism doesn't help in this situation. I just ta- I want to tap a uh, show's shoulder and I'll just do a little help. A little should I cure wounds him just to give him, make him feel better? They're there, my friend. I'll be all right. <laughs> Nothing I haven't handled before. I do. I did grow up in the carnival. That is very true. While well, this wasn't a pleasant experience, show is just used to it. All righty. So as the four of you reconvene from that little escapade to the bathroom, as you are all walking away, just the camera kind of stays in front of the bathroom and you just see a child go inside the one that show was in and immediately come out. It's like, who didn't put the air freshener? Sorry, buddy. And this kid just starts to be over dramatic. Oh, no. Ah. It's like that one episode of Malcolm in the Middle. It's just, oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How did you get on the ceiling? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So this poor kid is trying to figure out, OK, I need to use the restroom. The rest of them are occupied. I, this is awful. And just holds his nose and runs in. <laughs> Door closes and we cut. The camera cuts back to the four of you just continuing to walk. If you want to clean it. Do you have press the digitation? No, I have the ability clean. <laughs> That's oh, clean. Oh. <laughs> you know what? We're, we'll revisit Wait. that. <laughs> Wait, is that it, it? Was that a spell clean? Yes, there is a spell called clean. Oops. That's from my homebrew spells for my modern day campaign. Oh, really? I didn't choose yep. it. I just saw it. I was like, huh, that's cool. Yep. Nope. That's from my Urban Arcana homebrew for the Academy. Sorry. Okay, I just saw it in there. And went, oh, cool. Oops. <laughs> You're good. Don't worry about it. Oh, my goodness. So as the four of you continue to walk through this carnival, you continue to walk past all the carnival games. Alonzo, you see the mechanical bull operator as you're walking by just turn his head and gives you like one of these with the eyes. It's like I'm watching you kind of thing. I do. I do the Cora back. Be like the ride operator will remember this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. As you four continue to walk, you get to the cl- to the other side of the carnival where you have the. Ferris wheel kind of just lazily spinning uh, against the backdrop of the lake and the mountains with the sun. And then, of course, the your other thing is you have this big old circus tent a couple paces ne- away from the Ferris wheel. So where would you guys like to head to next? This has been a Vibe Tribe production. Remember, take care of each other, love one another. And as always, keep those good times rolling. We'll see you next time.